Okay, here we go. I am recording. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Virtually Chopped. We are all virtually competing in a cooking show. How crazy is that? If you have ever seen the Chopped cooking show before on Food Network channel, you'll know how this kind of works, but it's a little different since we're on Zoom. Um, if you'll notice, each one of our contestants has their cameras on so you can take a look at who is here. Uh, I don't know what to say now. <laughs> um, okay, so basically the, the rules and the way this works is each of our contestants has a basket full of mystery ingredients that they have to use in their dishes. And there are three rounds, an appetizer and snack round, a main course meal and a dessert round. And they have to use four mystery ingredients for each round. Sorry, I'm admitting people while I'm talking and it's very distracting. Okay. Hmm. So, you have anything you wanna say? This is Alice and I'm Malia. <laughs> A little late, but we are your hosts for the evening. Woo! Am I doing my part? Yeah. Wait a minute. If we're all on Zoom in different kitchens, how are we gonna taste the dishes? Oh, that's a good question, Alice. How are we going to judge the food that the contestants make? We can't taste through a screen. So instead of using taste as the most obvious way of judging, we are going to be judging these dishes on presentation, creativity, and accuracy. We'll get more into the details about that when the dishes are done. Um, let's see. How about we meet our contestants? Yeah, you want to introduce the first contestants? Yeah, okay, so contestants number one, well, the first team we're going to introduce are Leanne and Beth. Wave if that's you. Woohoo! Yeah, that's Chef Leanne and Chef Beth. <laughs> um, they are both juniors who love to go extra when it comes to food. They both thrive off of creating dishes for people they love and are here to win. They also have a passion for cooking gluten-free and will be doing so tonight. Wow. That's amazing. Everybody virtually clap for Leanne and Ben. Woo! Woo! So weird because I can't hear anybody clapping. Okay. Contestants number two, Hunter and Colin are both RAs in the Edwards dorm. Colin enjoys long walks on the beach and jumping over hurdles for the track team. Hunter enjoys long walks in the woods and foraging for mushrooms and berries. Mmm. They are excited to cook some good food for tonight's competition. Everybody Woo! say hello to Hunter and Colin. Hunter and Colin, give us a wave. Woo! Nope. There they are. There they are. Woo! All right. So our third contestant slash team. As a future biologist and a soon-to-be nurse, Dorothy and Kayla obviously bring a wealth of knowledge into the kitchen arena. They are excited to get a chance to cook and display their many years of training under the expertise of the Food Network channel, as well as their many years of consuming food. Ah, give it up for Dorothy and Kayla. Give a wave, Dorothy and Kayla. Oh, hello. Ooh. So good to meet you through a screen. And we have contestants number four, Brianna, who typically goes by Brie, and Riley, our roommates who throughout the semester have gotten pretty close through their shared shenanigans of trying to watch all the Disney Channel original movies available on Disney Plus, having random photo shoots in any and all moments possible, and working out via Just Dance videos on YouTube. They love to make food that's nutritious and delicious. Give it up for Brie and Riley. Woo! Nice. And our final contestant is Nathan Reichlin, who's a senior financial planning student here at George Fox. He spends his free time cooking, taking photographs, and exploring the outdoors. He says the weirdest food he's ever eaten is escargot, which is snails. Oh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. That's Give it up for Nathan. <laughs> okay, I bet you're all dying to know how will this chopped event turn out and what will the contestants win? Even, not even the contestants know what they win. Are you ready to hear? Are you ready to hear? I'm so ready to hear. Alice, do you know what the prize is? I, I do not. Please tell me what it is. The grand prize is an air fryer. What? That's pretty rad. So if you win, you get your very own air fryer. And I know most of you are cooking with a partner, so you're gonna have to like cut it in half or something, but I'm sure you'll make it work. All right. 
Let's get started with the first round. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm gonna set my timer for 15 minutes. You have 15 minutes to cook an appetizer or a snack. I'm gonna wait until I see all contestants ready and then we're going to open our baskets to reveal the mystery ingredients. Now don't start cooking until I say go because we have to show our audience what's in these terrifying baskets. And our first ingredient is zucchini. If you're not familiar with a zucchini, it looks like this. And our second basket ingredient is couscous. Boxed couscous. And our third basket ingredient, canned cheese. Huh? I know, it's crazy wicked. And the final basket ingredient for round one, our chickpeas in a can. Pretty wild. Okay, contestants, are you ready? Your time starts now. 15 minutes. Oh, it's so exciting. We will be giving you guys like time updates as we go along. Yep, just like they do. On the, the real show. Like, in the real deal. Which is what we're doing now. This is a real show. This is real. And if you're wondering how contestants will be chopped, just to let you know, I already told the contestants, but for those of you in the audience, instead of chopping them and sending them on their way, we are going to be keeping track of um, scores via paper and pencil. Um, and if they do get, quote, chopped, they get 10 points subtracted from their scores, which is a pretty large number of points, which will send them to the bottom, probably. Um, but they will have a chance to redeem themselves and they will have a chance to um, continue cooking with their basket ingredients. Let's check it out and see what our contestants are up to. I'm going to spotlight Nathan. Nathan, tell us, what are you cooking? Please unmute yourself. Oh, all right, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna do cheesy chickpeas and then we're gonna do uh, uh, cheesy uh, couscous and then I'm gonna toast up some. Chickpeas and then throw them on top and then uh, and mix them together with some um, tomatoes, zucchini, and then cilantro on top. Wonderful. You get all that? Yeah. It's, um, how are you doing the basket ingredients? Well, the couscous is uh, going to be mixed with the cheese. Uh, the cheese is going to be mixed with the couscous. Uh, chickpeas are going to be toasted. Uh, and brought together and brought together with the tomatoes and the zucchini and some cilantro. Wow, sounds like a very cool dish. Thank you for thank you for giving us a tour of what your menu is going to look like. He says you're welcome. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you. All right, you can now mute yourself. All right, let's go over to Beth and Leanne. Beth and Leanne, how's it going? You are spotlighted. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Hello, welcome. Woo! We're having an exciting time. Um, appetizer round. Today we are going to prepare for you a triple dip appetizer. It's pretty exciting. Over here, as you can see, Beth is making avocado hummus. Mmm. <laughs> what's better than that? Um, I, over here, I've got the quinoa going. We opted for the gluten-free version of couscous. So it's going in the pot. That is going to be a really exciting zucchini dip with the quinoa. And finally, we're gonna have to mix this cheese with something. <laughs> So it's gonna be a spicy pub cheese eventually. Somehow we'll transform this disgusting piece of trash into something magical that you and your judges will love from afar. Amazing. Thank you for sharing. I'll let you get back to cooking because it sounds like you've got a lot on your plate. Ooh, but, um, <laughs> all right, thank you, thank you. All right, let's go over to Dorothy and Kayla. An update, you have 11 minutes and 20 seconds left. Thank you for that update, Alice. You're welcome. Hello. Hi. <laughs> what are you guys cooking today? Okay, we decided to go and make some falafel and we're gonna incorporate the zucchini and the couscous and the garbanzo beans into the falafel. And 
we're gonna attempt to make a, a spicy red bell pepper sauce with the cheese okay. and a tzatziki dip. That's where we're going. What do you feel most challenged by in this round? The canned cheese. Yeah, it's throwing me for a loop. <laughs> I knew that would get you. I got a question. Dorothy, you won Heaven's Kitchen two years ago, didn't you? Yeah, we did. <laughs> How are you feeling being back in the kitchen with student activities? Um, it's great. I love cooking. It's super fun to have competitions for cooking. So we love it. Yeah. Sweet. Amazing. Thank you. Well, I'll let you get back to cooking. Everybody, you have about 10 and a half minutes. I hope you don't feel stressed out by that. Not yet, anyway. All right, Bree and Riley, let's, let's go over to you. How's it going? It is good. Yeah, wow, my head looks really big. Um, <laughs> yeah, Riley and I are making, what are we doing? Uh, we're making um, zucchini, couscous, and chickpea fritters with a cheesy sauce. Oh, sweet. So what are you doing with that bowl there? Can you show us? Can you give us a little sneak peek? No? And then we're going to add the Cool. Sweet. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. And now we're going to go over to Hunter and Colin for our final contestants that we're going to um, spotlight real quick. How are you guys doing? Good. We're doing good. Sweet. What are you guys up to? What are you cooking? All oh, right. Now I got this cuckoos in the pot. We got some zucchini chips about to be fried what? and then i'm going to work on a hummus dip ah. don't forget plating is very important it's part of the criteria your presentation everybody keep that in mind what are you guys going to do with the the string cheese thing <laughs> can we're going to add that to the dip i think oh a dip mm. Wow, we've got some really creative thinkers. Very cool. All right, I'm going to take the spotlight off of you so you can keep on doing your thing. I'm going to go back to gallery. All right, contestants, you have about eight and a half minutes. That's a lot of time to kill. Oh boy, what do we do with all this what time? Do, what do we do as hosts when we have this time to wait while they cook? Well, you know what? I, you know what? what? I, think, I think we should look over their applications. Oh, share some personal information. Yeah, our contestants did not know we'd be doing this, but ha, 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 ha. we want to share some of their answers that we asked. This and is part of the reason why we picked you to compete on our show, because we had so many applicants, but we chose these five to compete in tonight's... Uh, Chopped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. Okay, so Chef Beth, when she was applying, she was applying on her own originally, and when she was asked if you could be a kitchen appliance, which would you be and why? She responded, definitely a mixer. I enjoy stirring the pot and helping others get connected or mixed together. Also being able to make whipped cream whenever I wanted would be dope. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty cool answer. Wow. Hey, Malia. Yeah. What would you be if you could be any kitchen appliance? Um, you know, I... I like that question a lot, but you're going to have to ask me in the next round so I can have seven and a half minutes to think about it. Sounds good. Okay, cool. Cool. What about you, audience? Would you reply in the chat bar if you are <laughs> able to <laughs> say what kitchen appliance you would be and why? We'd love to hear from you. We might even share some of the answers. Yeah, go ahead and put in the chat what kitchen appliance you would be and why. Let's check out what, what we're doing over here. We're going to spotlight some contestants. They won't really know because they are madly cooking away. But let's see how they're doing. I see, ooh, some ooh. chickpeas at Nathan's station. Oh, he's got the he's got the canned cheese open. Ooh. What do you think he's gonna do with that? See, that's a chef's real nightmare. Something that's pre-made and in a can that you have to put to all the, use. All the preserves and- Yeah, that didn't make any sense. But you know what? I got it. That's all that matters. It looks like we're a little bit frozen. So let's go to somebody else. Let's check out Beth and Leanne are so hard at work. Let's see what they're doing. Oh, I see Ooh, a handheld okay. mixer. Ooh, wow, Leanna's amazing. You don't have to doing, unmute. No, no, We're you just looking to. at you. You're all good. What are we saying? <laughs> You're all good. No, you keep cooking. Oh, just, keep cooking. We're just spotlighting your work. Okay, awesome. We're just talking about you. <laughs> wow, look at the way they move. They're fast. 
amazing and their kitchen looks pretty organized that's how you know a good chef look at them they hung their bananas they hung their bananas that's what a true uh, oh open the squeezy cheese Ooh, mm, I Ooh, wonder. we got two responses in the chat for which kitchen appliance would you be and why megan says and refuge <laughs> i personally nice uh <laughs> the next one was from olivia which is two people refrigerator because it is an essential part of the kitchen that's very true and mixer because i like to combine multiple things oh very nice olivia very nice let me take this spotlight off so we don't have to show them off. thank you guys for your answers we appreciate those we will have more questions throughout the night yes let's take a look at dorothy and kayla i see something interesting happening over there you don't have to unmute you can keep on mixing you want if you want to talk you can um, right now, this is the chicken mixture that we got. We're gonna, we have the couscous, the garbanzo beans, and the zucchini in, so we're getting ready to fry them up. Amazing. So. Thanks for sharing. There are five minutes left. I thought this time would go by faster, and oh, I just got another response to um, Alice's awesome Four. question. Okay. That would be a toaster, dot, 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 because bread that's impressive that's a good answer good, good answer all right now we're going to switch the camera over to hunter and colin you guys can stay muted if you'd like but we're just going to spotlight you and get a look at what you're doing okay they've already started plating it looks like it's notes that's impressive oh they're already Ooh. plating we've can got, you believe it wow we've got our contestants plating oh, already stretch. with four minutes and 13 seconds on the clock there's another response to our question, which kitchen appliance would you be and why? Maya, Maya says a fork, because it's always useful. Maya, is a fork useful when you have a bowl of soup? Let me know what you think. Or cereal. Or cereal. Oh, oh, oh thank you. <laughs> well, I can't get it. Uh, there you go. Uh, good. Carson, if you could turn off your camera, that'd be great. Thanks, Carson. Thank you. All right, let's move the spotlight over to Bree and Riley. We have three minutes and 35 seconds on the clock. All right, you guys can keep your volume off if you'd like. We're just gonna be watching you and- We're trying to make this as much of a like real cooking show as possible. So at this point, we'd be walking around with the camera, you know, looking at everyone's station, just seeing how you're cooking and how the uh, stress of the time crunch is getting to your brain, but it looks like most of them are staying pretty calm. That's true. Maya says if if you have soup and only a fork, you just drink the soup, and I see no problem with that at all. I yeah, that's great. I love it. A good answer. There are three minutes on the clock. Three minutes left. Make sure if you haven't started plating, you might want to start thinking about it. Yes, make sure you you've started thinking about plating if you haven't started already. I wish we had some background music. Let me know what you guys think of my background music. It's amazing. Do, 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 do. All right, anyone else want to answer in the chat? What kitchen appliance would you be and why? You have two minutes and 20 seconds on the clock. You could just keep spotlighting. Oh, Nathan, please keep your camera on. Um, Nathan, thank you. Please keep your camera on. <laughs> Let's take a look at what he's doing. Plating already. Wow, that looks pretty tasty there are, from what I can see. There are two minutes on the clock. We should have, uh, we should have him taste the dishes. <laughs> thank you, Olivia. I'm glad you enjoyed my background music. Jeopardy. Nice. All right. Let's see if let me think of the kitchen appliance. Let's see if Dorothy and Kayla have started plating yet. No need to unmute or anything. Just make sure you guys are working on plating soon. You have a minute and 34 seconds left on the clock. One minute and 30 seconds left. Thank you, Alice. Tammy, please turn off your camera. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, possible. Thank you, Tammy. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at Beth and Leanne and see if they've started plating yet with one minute and 10 seconds on the clock. Alice, if you if you were competing tonight in this competition, 
what would you do with a squeezy cheese? I would eat it straight out of the can. And That's then, disgusting. And then figure out what to do with it, with that extra Bond. brain power. All right, you have 55 seconds. Oh, 55 right. seconds Ooh. left, contestants. Oh, looks like an early plater. Chef Beth and Chef Leanne look like they're amazing. pretty much done. I can't wait to hear about your dishes. Remember, you're going to have to present it. So if you haven't thought of what you're going to say, you might want to start thinking about it. Amazing. Wow. Looks great. Go to gallery view. Okay, 30 seconds, chefs. 30 seconds. Should we do a countdown when we yeah. get to 10 or All right. 5? 10. 10 seconds. 15 seconds. This is so intense. <laughs> okay. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and one. That's Contestants. it. Hands up. You're done. I want to see everybody's hands. Uh, stop. All right. Awesome. Okay. It nice. looks like everyone finished on time, so they get points for that. Let's have uh, Bree and Riley. You are going to present first. Tell us what you made this evening for the appetizer snack dish. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay. So um, these are oh. here. Here you go. Thank you. Yes. Wonderful. These are zucchini, chickpea, and couscous fritters and with like a creamy cheese sauce to go with them. Could you repeat what it is? Um, <laughs> they are zucchini, chickpea, and couscous fritters with a cheese sauce. Cool. Interesting. All right, you want to have a little taste? Sure. Let me try it. I can't have it because it has meat. All right, okay. Brie, you want to have a little taste? <laughs> yes. Yeah. This won't be included in the final score. We, we just want to see your reaction. <laughs> oh, don't stay on the camera. Nice. It's good. Huh? Sweet. <laughs> the cheese sauce actually tastes good. That's you know, that's pretty impressive. I'm not going to lie. Okay, thank you nice. for sharing. We will take all of those things into consideration. Hunter and Colin, go ahead and present what you made. Unmute, please. I hope you're ready. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. So I got fried zucchini chips on a bed of couscous with some cheesy hummus with some pine nuts on top. Okay. So how do you eat this? Is it like pita chips and hummus where you just dip it and Thanks. dip? Okay. Enjoy. <laughs> Wanna actually try it and let us know? Good. Yeah. Very good. Um, did you use all four basket ingredients? Yes, I did. Wonderful. Can you explain how you use them? We got the zucchini right here, mm -hmm. the right here, the chickpeas, and the cheese is inside the hummus. Oh, got Brilliant. it. Very good. Amazing. Thank you very much. I wish I could taste it, but I can't. Okay, and Beth and Leanne, you're up to present. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so we decided to present you guys with three different dips today because we thought the ingredients would be super good for appetizer dips. And this right here is an avocado hummus where we use the chickpeas and we've also carrots, snow peas, and celery. We've got a spicy cub cheese happening over here and a zucchini. <laughs> delicious dip happening mm -hmm. it's all seasoned very nicely so mm -hmm. we do wish you could taste it and we also garnished it with my homegrown rosemary on all three of the dips what was the third dip again sorry i missed it zucchini <laughs> <laughs> all right you want to give it a taste yeah we'd love to oh god <laughs> you gagging over there <laughs> Oh, that's actually really good. Which one did you try? I was like, surprised. <laughs> wow. It is tasty. Okay. And did you use all four ingredients? Yeah, we did. Amazing. Okay. Well, enjoy your hummus. Okay. Do you have anything else? Do you have mm. Yum. Okay. Thank you very much. Sounds good. All right. Let's go over to Nathan. Nathan, go ahead and tell us what you made for your appetizer snack round. All right, I made some cheesy couscous topped with some crispy chickpeas and then uh, fresh, uh, fresh cherry tomatoes and zucchini and a little bit of cilantro. Very cool. 
could you name the dish one more time? Sorry. Uh, cheesy couscous with crispy chickpeas. Okay. That's awesome. So how did you use the cheese? Cheese was melted down and blended into the couscous before plating. Okay. Uh, chickpeas were crisped up uh, in a pan sauteed and then with a little with some of the zucchini uh, with the zucchini and then the uh, uh, tomatoes. Awesome. I love all the colors. That looks great. You want to give it a taste for us? Give it a taste. Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> oh my god. Good. Yeah. It's not bad. It's good. He said it's not bad. Not uh -oh. bad? No, sorry. Let me know. I was not expecting easy cheese to be good. Let's put it that way. But it works. Did you, did you, use, delicious. Did you use all four ingredients? I just wanted to verbally say cheese, that. couscous, chickpeas, zucchini. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Very cool. <laughs> All right, now we're going to go to Dorothy and Kayla, and, and we're going to spotlight you. Feel free to tell us what you made. Okay, so we have our plate here. Um, we made a falafel out of the chickpeas and the zucchini, and we also incorporated the couscous into there um, and some parsley. <laughs> and we made a um, red bell pepper aioli with the uh, cheddar uh, cheese canned cheese in there. Um, and we also made a Greek yogurt tzatziki dip with dill and um, everything but the bagel spice from Trader Joe's. <laughs> nice. All right, sounds amazing. Go ahead and give it a taste. You wanna try the dip? Yeah. That's actually pretty good. That's very good. <laughs> I'm very surprised. <laughs> Plate one more time. Let's see. Yeah. One more time. Very cool. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. And do you verbally agree that you used all four ingredients? Yes, yes, we did. All right, amazing. So audience, now Alice and I need to discuss what we think about these four, I mean, five amazing dishes. So we're gonna go on mute and allow our contestants to clear their stations and get ready for round two. So it's going to be an awkward 30 seconds, but give us 30 seconds to chat and we'll be right back with you. Yeah, we got it.
All right, we have made our decision. So who was on the chopping block? We had two people narrowed down and we were like, man, this is tough to decide, but it all boiled down to presentation. And people that we are gonna be chopping today are Bree and Riley. Unfortunately, you have been chopped. However, you do get to still compete. We will just be subtracting points from your score. Okay? So please continue to cook unless you're too sad. Nope, keep cooking, please. Um, and but for the record, we thought your creativity was wonderful. We yes. love the idea of fritters. Yes. Just the presentation could have used a little bit more work, maybe some color. And applause to all of you for using all four weird ingredients. Yay! All right, let's move on to round two. Sweet. Round two is 30 minutes long. The contestants will have 30 minutes to make a main course meal, which is a long time that we're going to have. Um, Nathan, please keep your camera on. Thank you. Um, so they'll have 30 minutes to cook a main course meal. Uh, let's go over what's in the baskets. Contestants, please step over to your baskets and open those things up. In our second course, I mean, in our second round, we have the mango. That's in case you've never seen a mango oh. before, this is what a mango looks like. Interesting. And this one's a tough ingredient because mangoes are pretty hard to peel. So yeah. good luck, contestants. The second item in our main course dish is canned coconut milk. Coconut milk. Hmm, interesting. And the third basket ingredient is what is this? Is that a big grape? No, it's a tomatillo. Our contestants will be using tomatillos. Tomatillos? Tomatillos? What, what are those? What do they taste like? Let me tell you. I, let me go. Let me <laughs> go. <laughs> Let's see. What does a tomatillo taste They're like? They're sometimes called husk tomatoes and they look like green unripe tomatoes with a dry leafy husk that wraps around the outside. Husk. Wonderful. So they're part of the tomato family. Very cool. Wow, our, our contestants are so shocked at these wacky ingredients. And the final ingredient is animal crackers. And gluten-free version. And we do have a gluten-free version with Beth and Leanne. Wonderful. All right, contestants, you have 30 minutes on the clock. Whoa, whoa, and are your you, time. What? Are you all ready? I'm all gonna right. wait till I see Start all. Start with your hands up so we know you're not touching any of the ingredients. Your time starts now. Very cool. Okay. I wish I could like hang this on the wall. Maybe I'll turn it sideways. So Maybe you can like stack it on top of the box or something. Yeah. Okay. Well, while we wait patiently, let's read someone else's response to our question. If you could be a kitchen appliance, which one would you be and why? We're going to look at Chef Brianna and Riley. Um, they both answered, we would be a fridge because it's what's on the inside that matters. Oh, wow. That was so deep. That's pretty cute. That's cute. However, some people care about the outside, like stainless steel fridges. Have you seen those fridges that have like the screen that you can uh, see into or the touch screen fridges? Those are wild. Those are expensive. That's what those are. I don't know if I would ever do that, but no, if I'd ever get yeah. one, but they seem kind of cool. Yeah, they do seem kind of cool. Let's read another response. Chef Hunter and Chef Colin replied, well, I guess it's just Chef Hunter. He said, I would be a crock pot because I like to take my time to produce quality work. Oh, wow. That's Very interesting cool. in this time crunch of a cooking competition. Wow, I see some expert chopping at Hunter and Colin station. Let's go over to them and see how they're doing. Hunter and Colin, please tell us Ooh. what you're doing with that fruit. Yeah, right now I'm Chopping up this mango um, because I'm going to add it into our mango tapatio curry or tapatio, right? Oh, whatever you want. Yeah. But what was what was your method for cutting the mango? Because there's like a billion different methods for cutting mangoes. Oh well, see what I like to do. Pretty easy. You go down. And then you do diagonal crosses. Careful, careful. Yeah, out. Very oh, cool. beautifully done. Come right out. Thank you. Awesome. All right, we'll let you get back to work. We're going to come back and ask you what you're cooking later. 
Yes, that, that'll course. be late. We just wanted to see how you were cutting your mango. Anyone else cut mango yet? Oh, Dorothy and Kayla. Let's see how you cut your mango. They don't even care about me. <laughs> how did you cut your mango? Hello. Um, so I sliced the middle of the seed out and then took a cup to like get the inside out of the shell. So oh, then you just seen that before. Yeah. Clean shell. So you didn't even use a peeler at all. Nope. You know what you're doing. They under that. <laughs> wow. Thank you for sharing. We will let yeah. you do it. Is anybody else? Um, Chef Nathan, I cannot see what you were doing. How's it going over there? Have you cut your mango? Oh, I don't see any. Okay, Ooh, guys, let's go over to Bree and Riley. It cut out, just letting you know. Oh, I don't know. Bree and Riley, how's it going? Have you cut your mango? Not yet. We were working on crunching up some animal crackers for a um, coating of, for our fish. Absolutely. That's awesome. We will come back to you. Keep on working. All right. I don't see anybody else getting to their... We can mangoes. start asking about their cooking in how a little you, bit. Yeah, how do you cut your mango? Because I, I thought everybody would cut it the way I cut my mango. So I have my mango. I cut it in half with a knife all the way around until it hits the pan. Like an avocado? Yeah. And then mm. I just go... Okay. And then I cut the inside into slices. And then I have the slice with the peel. I don't peel it. Okay. So when I eat it, I just kind of peel it back and go... Okay, kind of like an orange. Sound effects included. Yes, but no, because you peel the orange peel off and then some people don't pull their orange peel off they slice them oh like that way mm -hmm. Got it. yeah like if you, you know, cut it that way i peel my mango before i cut it that's so much extra work it is it and i easily. i didn't even realize before i talked to all these people about how they cook their or cut their mangoes that's pretty impressive who knew oh i see some some crunching action over there Very crunchy cool. crunchy all right let's start asking yeah. people what they're cooking let's spotlight these chefs all right beth and leanne we're heading your way please unmute yourself and let us know what it is you're cooking. So we're deciding to make you guys tacos today with mango salsa and a coconut milk coleslaw. Very cool. Coconut milk coleslaw, yum. What are you doing with those animal crackers? Are you gonna use your hands or a... Yeah. Chicken is gonna be breaded in animal crackers. Oh, an animal cracker breading. So it's a crusty chicken taco. Oh, yeah. crusty taco. chicken taco. Mm, crusty. Mm. A crusty chicken taco. Brilliant. Amazing. You keep crunching. We'll be back. We'll mute you guys. Yeah, don't we worry got about it. it. We got it. We got it. Oh, we got it. All right. <laughs> now let's go over to Hunter and Colin. We're going to spotlight you. Let us know what it is that you're cooking. All right, today we are cooking breaded chicken with a mango tomatillo coconut curry. Ooh, okay. So some more breaded chicken. Interesting. Oh, I see. With a curry. Yeah. That's impressive. Okay. What What are you doing with that um, paper towel? Oh, he's crushing it. This? You're crushing it. I thought that was your I, uh, I'm crumbling the crackers to make it a nice in texture. So yeah. even Amazing. Amazing. Thank you very much. Keep on cooking. We're going to mute you and take you off the spotlight. Let's go over to Nathan. He's finally cutting his mango. I wonder if he's feeling a bit behind. Nathan, how's it going? What are you making? I am making, as everyone else is, breaded chicken with a, a mango, uh, mango tomatillo bok choy curry uh, served over rice. Okay. So what kind of rice are you using tonight, Nathan? Uh, just white rice. Okay, cool. And how did you cut your mango? Uh, I mean, you kind of saw it. You cut it in half. You cut it in half. Cut. Cut. Flip it back. Cut it down. Nice. Very cool. Mango. No, <laughs> make <laughs> mango. I'm going to talk ever again. Thank you, Nathan. We're going to go ahead and take the spotlight off of you. Chefs, you have 23 minutes. Time is flying by. Let's go ahead and check on Bree and Riley. Bree and Riley, how's it going? What are you doing? 
you look you look you look good how's it going you're muted what okay sorry um i'm crushing some animal crackers currently for a coating for our fish okay yeah because we're gonna be making some fish tacos so very cool what kind of fish are you using uh cod cod, cod. yeah very cool. good fish taco fish and what, yeah. kind of, uh, what kind of shell are you going to be giving us tonight? Um, a corn shell. Hard shell or soft shell? Soft, but cooked in coconut oil. Ooh. Oh, very cool. I'm very excited to see how that turns out. Thank you, Riley. We're going to yeah. take off the spotlight, let you keep cooking. All right. Who have we not Did we have Dorothy? No, I think we need to check on Dorothy and Kayla. How is it going over there? Going good. Good. What do you mean? Um, like a lot of people, we're making tacos. Um, we're doing shrimp um, breaded with uh, coconut and animal crackers. So it's going to be coconut shrimp tacos. We are also doing a coconut milk coleslaw. And um, we're going to make a chutney, a chutney with mango and roasted tomatillos. Yeah. Mango Gross. chutney. Love it. Chutney. I love all these chef tastic words you're using. I don't use that word, chef. I will never say chef tastic again in my life. I am taking you off the spotlight. Thank you very much. Go ahead and mute yourself. Um, contestants. I mean, not contestants. <laughs> audience. We want to ask you guys something. If you had these ingredients, what would you make? The ingredients are mango, canned coconut milk, tomatillos, and animal crackers. Let's put those in the chat for you guys and you let us know what it is you would cook. Let us know. All right, I'm gonna type this in really fast. I don't know where it is. That's right, thanks. Okay. Mango, tomatillo. Alice, when you eat mango, are you wanna, do you like to put the chili on it? You know, like the spicy spice? Ooh. Um. If I have it around, I think it's a good addition. Like the, it's like a lime and- A tahine. Yeah, that's what it's called. You like putting that on your mango? If it's around, yeah. Oh, okay. See, I like my mango just the way it is. Just the way it is. What's your favorite fruit? Out of all the fruits? Well, if we're talking about frequency, I eat an apple like every day. You must never visit the doctor, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but I think out of all the fruits, the one that's most tasty to me, uh, I I really love pomegranates. Even though they're such a pain to eat, I really love them. They're really, they're really tasty. Oh, interesting. All right, we got some answers in the chat. Megan would cook a sweet and spicy curry with a crunch. Ooh, so I've heard lots of curries. I bet the coconut milk mm -hmm. is what got people thinking of curry. Uh-huh. Cool. Interesting. Abigail says, mango, tomatillo, and coconut blended soup with toasted animal cracker croutons. How would you make croutons out of animal crackers? That's a good question. I don't How know. How do you make croutons in general? Oh, I wonder. Do you just wonder... take bread and bake it for a really long French time? French toast? Mango French toast? Luke it... would make French toast with these ingredients. Tomatillos on my French toast does not sound super awesome. Tina says, maybe a chicken, mango, coconut, Thai curry using the animal crackers ground up as a thickener. Interesting. That's sounds really fun. cool. <laughs> oh, some great answers there in the chat. Let's see how much time we have. I feel like it always goes so much faster. Lan like, is having shows. a snack. Lan, what are you snacking on? <laughs> you can't, you're muted. You're <laughs> I just tried a tomatillo for the first time. I what was really surprised. Yeah? Yeah, can I have another bite of that? Can I get one? Did that um, yeah. So this is what the inside of the tomatillo looks like. Okay. Wonderful. Like kiwi. Kind of, I guess. <laughs> and it's got just, just a good little kick to it. Okay. Oh. It's like kind of spicy, but also sweet. Oh, this is going to be really spicy. Yeah, it's going to be really spicy, Beth says, because we're also putting jalapenos in it. Oh, you're Very adding cool. jalapenos. Yeah. Awesome. All right, we're going to let you get back to it. Olivia says, 
They cook a fire roasted tomatillo curry with coconut calvo's rice with animal breaded chicken thighs. Wow. And mango would be with the curry. That sounds good. That does sound good. Mm, I'm getting hungry. Fire roasted. That's that sounds good. Fire roasted tomatillo curry. Let's take a look at this tomatillo. I almost want to crack it open and have a little try. We're going to do a tomatillo dissection live. <laughs> live, live on the show. So first, I'm going to take off the husk. The husk, which is the anatomical term for the outside of a tomatillo. Oh, it's sticky. Uh, this is Daniel. Kinda... I'm sorry, Sparky is gone. We hope he comes back without those ingredients and that he's well. Okay. Um. Good luck. This is the inside of the tomatillo. To me, it looks like a baby green apple. Would you agree? Yeah. And it's really sticky. You want to give it a smell? Oh. What does it smell like? It doesn't smell like food. Oh. It smells like the corn maze. What? It smells like a corn <laughs> maze. <laughs> okay. Ugh, I don't really like it, but I hope these chefs are able to transform it into something amazing. I also appreciate that Beth and Leanne had a, or I guess Leanne had a taste of the tomatillo because it's important to know what it is you're cooking with before you can cook with it. Maya wants to know if we're going to taste it. I would taste it. I'd just take a big bite. Take a giant bite. Do I need to wash this? Because it is sticky. It is sticky. You're, you'll be fine. Would I die if I bite a sticky tomatillo? Also, thanks, Olivia, for the fun fact. Fun fact for the chefs who are cooking. Tomatillos are in the gooseberry family, not the tomato. I didn't know that. Maya says, I will not die. Luke says, maybe. Send, Send it. it. Here we go. Ugh. Is your mouth on fire? It's not spicy at all. Oh. <laughs> it's literally not spicy. <laughs> oh. It tastes like. Try another one. Maybe that one's just not spicy. Try the other side. Maybe only one side of the tomatillo is. Spicy. Wait, dude, it tastes like the slight kick. Not like spicy, not like hot, but like a kick. That looks pretty good. You're just going. 15 minutes, everyone. You have 15 minutes left. 15. How many times is Malia going to say 15? You're halfway done. Oh, yeah. Good math. All right. So let me explain this taste. I'm not a big fan, but it tastes as if you're biting into a, I was going to say raw tomato, but that's not true. Oh, um, like unripe. an unripe tomato. Yes, but it also mixed, like with like, mixed with like those green leaves that you find on the side of the road that you can eat and they're sour. Like, have you ever had those? Do you, guys, any, but do you guys eat raw leaves off the side of the road? Cause I don't. When I was little, we had these like little leaves that you could eat off the floor, like not the floor, off the bush <laughs> or whatever. And we would just pick them and eat them and they tasted sour. Yeah, Alice. Okay, well. Yeah. Um, I can't stop smelling it. It smells like a corn maze. Does the you know inside it smell, smell like different than the outside? Oh, it smells like a tomato now. Yeah, but hmm. anyway, I don't really like it, but I hope the chefs can think of something. Let's ask the audience another question. So if you're watching this show, you've probably watched at least one cooking show, um, be it in your life. I don't know why I said. That's okay. <laughs> so in the comments, please comment your favorite cooking show, your favorite Food Network show. It could be on a different platform if you watch it on netflix or whatever you watch it on go ahead and put that in your comments we're gonna take a little round with our camera and see what everyone's doing here we have nathan looks like he's busy worst cooks in america oh, he's already favorite. frying up oh that looks like something. a crispy bok choy is that lettuce or bok choy bok choy it looks like bok choy bok choy yes very bok cool. choy is a leafy vegetable. Bok. It's amazing. If my, I could it's be, my dad's favorite vegetable, actually. If I, if I could be any vegetable, I would be a baby bok choy. Really? Why? Because it's just the top is so voluptuous and the bottom is so curvy. Curvy. 
No, they, they're just so lovely. And they are so lovely. They just and look so nice and bundled. And they're super healthy, too. Very healthy. Very cool. I have some in my fridge right now. Oh, good. Bok choy. Thank you, Nathan. It looks like you're you're cutting up some more produce. I'll let you get back to it. Thanks for showing your uh, chicken. Let's pop over to Bree and Riley. You don't have to come over to the camera. We're just looking at what you're doing. Oh, Bree is busy doing something. You know what I found out the other day? What? Guy Fieri. Fieri. His, his name's actually pronounced to rhyme with confetti. So like Guy Fieri. Isn't that the most insane thing? Confetti? Yeah, like Guy Fieri. 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 Wow. It's fun fact. Yeah, I found that out the other day and I was like, I feel like I've been lied to. Hmm. I've always wanted to meet that guy. I thought it was Guy Fieri. 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 It looks like fiery. Guy Fieri. <laughs> I should be him for Halloween. Iron Chef America, back when they did that. Tina, those are some great choices. Wouldn't it be great funny if, for so if someone dressed up as an Iron Chef for Halloween, but they're really Iron Man, but with a chef hat and an apron? That's a brilliant idea. Thank you. Guys, Grocery Games, that's a good one. Great, great British, British baking, baking show. Ah, uh, a, a good one, a good one. Let's, <laughs> let's remove the spotlight from Bree and Riley. Let them get back to what they were doing. Let's check out this station over here. What are Hunter and Colin doing? They look doing? bored. I don't think there's enough stress on their shoulders. Well, you, you have, have 11 <laughs> minutes. You've got 11 minutes left. Oh, it looks like ooh, That's creamy. Yummy curry looking mm. stuff. Is that curry? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they said they were making curry. Oh, and we've got breaded ooh. chicken. Oh, you got 10 minutes and 53 seconds. You better get you better that cooking. You better get that meat in the pan. Double yeah. egg wash. Very cool. Amazing job. Wow. All right. Well, keep cooking. You might want to toss that into the... Whoop, here also, I just want to know, you got a cool pineapple shirt on. Great. I do, yeah. Nice. Is Very that, cool. Oh, is that your favorite fruit? Of course. Very cool. So good. All right. Well, keep cooking your chicken. Let's go over to Kiki and Kayla. Can't forget about Kayla. There she is. There she is. Oh, wow. There are your little shrimps. I see them. How's it going? Good. Good. We just started the shrimp. Okay. Skin okay. is sizzling. Good. You all do that sizzle when you put it in the pan. That's how you yeah. know. Yeah. Oh, what are you? We got some mango sauce over here. What is that thing for? Um, We're going to have a beverage with the, with the meal as well. Oh, wow. Just casually, you know, a beverage. Yeah, you know. I just love a good swig of something while they're... Yep. And Luke did say, pour one out for Sparky, so... Pour one out for Sparky. For you, Sparky. This is for you. Let's go over to uh, Nathan. Did we already check on Nathan? Yeah, we did. Let's check on Beth and Leanne. Beth and Leanne. Oh, they look... Oh, Ooh, Beth little is taste having test. a little taste snack. Test. <laughs> She's snacking. She's liking it. It's literally, it's literally so tasty. Out. We can't stop eating it. Okay, we'll make oh, sure there's no. enough for us to see. <laughs> yeah. This is how the salsa turned out. Nice and bright colored. It's colored. bright and colorful and thick. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, very cool. Amazing. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, so many people are joining. Great. We're just going to keep spotlighting people. Yep. Ooh, that is Can I get the time check, guys? Absolutely. You have eight minutes and 43 seconds. Sure. Yeah. Very oh. cool. Beautiful dishes I see. I I can I can feel the creativity in this round. Like I'm, I'm last round it was new, it was fresh, everyone's getting used to, you know, cooking in front of an audience. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many people have done that before, but I feel like now people are more comfortable and they're ready to. Go ahead. Uh, ready to cook. What would you cook <laughs> if you were given these ingredients? Let's see, if I was given mango, coconut milk, animal crackers, and a tomatillo, uh, I'd probably, I'd probably make maybe like, I like the shrimp taco idea. Mm -hmm with the coconut, the coconut shrimp. 
That sounds brilliant. That does but sound that's good. me copying <clears throat> what I just heard. So I need to think more creatively. Create, Cre creatively. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Let's see. Let me let me look. I don't know. I, I don't know what I would cook. I don't. I don't know. Curry, curry, curry would be a good idea. Curry with the coconut milk. I might make like a creamy sauce to go on top of some chicken. Can you? Make, I might make a pasta. Ooh. With a salad on the side with like a mango tomatillo, like a uh, salsa type of thing. No, not dressing. Salsa. Dressing. Vinaigrette. Vinaigrette. That's, that's a fancy and word. And then I would make croutons or just crunch these up and sprinkle them on top like croutons. Is there any way to turn animal crackers into a savory thing? Savory. My savory. one concern is that these dishes, I mean, we're not tasting them, but. You can imagine. That it might be hard to get the sweet kick out yeah. of those. Yeah. Yes. sweet animal cracker breaded chicken turned out amazing i cannot stop eating it this <laughs> actually is like really tasty on the chicken i highly recommend it and then um paired with the spicy salsa because remember it has jalapenos in it not just tomatillos mm -hmm. um, it's very good <laughs> wow sweet. I'm happy it's very sweet and very delicious with the chicken all right, you've convinced us. Mm. Are you guys working in the Bon Appetit kitchen right now? I can see the logo on the right side. On the right side, the bon our very own Bon Appetit. Working in the bone. Nice. Very cool. Awesome. Okay, contestants, you have six minutes left. Six minutes. Make sure you guys are getting everything. I done hope if you're cooked. cooking a meat or some sort of poultry, you have it in the pan cooking by now because. Six minutes isn't a lot of time to get raw meat cooked and plate. Ooh, what's in that pan? Uh, looks like it. We're looking at Hunter and Colin. Oh, looking at Hunter and Colin's screen. Oh, I see some doing. crispy chicken. Ooh, that's looking good. Hmm. Very cool. I wonder if anybody in the audience has ever had like a kitchen nightmare. You know what I mean? Like something terrible happened in the kitchen. Like you accidentally lit your popcorn on fire in the Can microwave. I tell you my Alice, do you have story? a kitchen nightmare? Yeah. Okay. All right. Time check. Five minutes and 10 seconds. I'm going to start my kitchen nightmare story. Oh, good. So at my parents' house, we keep a bunch of pans and pots in the oven because we have so many that they don't fit in our cupboards. My grandma does that. Yeah. And I once emptied all of them out, but I didn't notice that some rubber part in one of the pans fell out into the back of the oven. Oh, no. And so it was preheating, and I was ready to bake some cupcakes. You know, back in my cupcake phase, I would make rainbow cupcakes and peppermint, all these oh, fun things. Wow. Anyway, I start smelling something, and I'm like, mm-mm, that's not a good oven smell. So I run to the oven, open it, and there's a fire inside the oven, a real-life fire. And I was like, ah, no. And so I got really scared, but my sister grabbed like a pot and filled it with water and then tossed it in there. And then we turned it off. It was fine, but it smelled really bad. And the whole house was filled with really smoke bad. because it's rubber. That's my kitchen nightmare story. Oh my gosh. That sounds terrible. I was also like 10. Scarring. I was 10, so I'm fine now. Did the you cry? I don't remember if they were good. Did you cry? Yes. Did From like the anxiety. Oh, I'm sure. That sounds really scary. Four <laughs> minutes left, contestants. If you... If you have, were the cupcakes good though? I don't remember, but I did make some really good cupcakes back in the day. What is your favorite shape of animal cracker? Oh, they come in shapes. Yeah, there's like well, animals. animals. I like the ones, like the, the frosted animal, like the circus ones. Those ones are so good. Mm, looks like we have a lion, elephant. Wait, can you flip it over? They all just look like that. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the zebra. <clears throat> How personally? do you know it's a zebra though? It just looks like a horse. Because it has the indentations of the stripes, right? Yeah. I don't think we just gotta it. open these things up. All right, time check. We have 13, I mean three minutes and 13 <laughs> seconds. It looks like we have an elephant. Very cool. Those are pretty detailed actually. See, that's what I mean. What is this? Iguana? Gorilla. Gorilla. R.I.P. Harambe, right? Buffalo? That's a rhino. 
Rhino. Two minutes and 45 seconds left on the clock. Make sure you're thinking about plating if you haven't started yet. This is the zebra, right? You see the little stripes in the thing? Yeah, this one looks like a zebra. Two minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. Oh, and last but not least, the giraffe. Very cool. All right, we're gonna take a look. Ooh. Dorothy and Caleb. Kayla, they are plating already. Sweet. You guys have two minutes and five seconds left on the clock. Ooh, knife cuts. Ooh. Knife cuts are very important that looks when cooked. evaluating. All right, one minute and 50 seconds. I don't see any pink spots, so that's good. Uh, that's good. Oh, no. It's it's not not it can't be like, oh, you're having a curry. But... Oh, wow. Are you reducing the coconut milk? That's nice and juicy. We have one minute and 25 seconds left. Make sure you're getting your stuff on the plate. Yeah. These guys are really intense. Yeah. Ooh, Olivia says, my mom's roommate added half a head of garlic instead of half a clove. She just like garlic's only had half the recipe or so she thought. That's a nightmare. That'll ruin it for you. I sat in sap today and now it's one minute on the clock. Mm -hmm. Fun fact, did you know that the best way to get like tree sap off of you is mayonnaise, a kitchen ingredient. Can I use mayonnaise on my pants? Yeah. That sounds kind of weird, but That's I think fact. I should try it. Thank you for letting me know. You're 40 welcome. seconds, please start plating if you haven't. Let's do a run through of everybody and see how stressed out they are. All right, have 40 seconds. you have 33 seconds. 33 seconds. Make sure you're getting everything on the plate. It all comes down to this. this? Not really. This right. Oh, 20 seconds on the clock. Make sure you are plating. You should be plating by now if you have not yet. 15 seconds. Oh. Beth and Leanne are arguing. <laughs> There's some heat in the kitchen. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. three two, one. That's Very it. Nice. Hands so, up. You're done. Hands up. Let us see. Let us see your hands. Hands up, chefs. That's Please. great. Thank you, everybody. All right. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. It looks like everybody finished on time. That gives you points. Very good. Let's go ahead and start with Beth and Leanne. Please tell us what you made for your main dish. Awesome. We've got classic crunchy crusted chicken tacos mm -hmm. and we also decided to put the mango and tomatillos in a salsa with some jalapeno to add a little spice infused with lime and cilantro with a coconut milk coleslaw that also has some garlic and cilantro and lime juice in it wow would you like to taste them even though we all know you oh have gosh. i have been waiting for this forever <laughs> <laughs> my whole life <laughs> is leading to this moment. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. I'm really good. It's so flavorful. <laughs> love it. Love That's it. That's great. Oh, wow. mm. We're going to move on. Did you use all four okay. ingredients? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Amazing job. We're going to move on to the next, next, uh, next group. Um, Hunter and Colin, please present what you made this evening. Okay. So as you can see, we have a breaded chicken curry. So what we got here is inside the curry is the mangoes, tomatillos. There is some jalapenos in there to add a little kick to the little sourness of the tomatillos, and then we added the coconut milk, as well as some chicken broth to make it all condensed and nice and thick. And we topped it off, if you can see here, with a coconut lime drizzle. That's 
sounds good. And did you guys use the washing machine that it's sitting on for the cooking? Uh, no. Well, for part of it. Very, I'm just cool. joking. That's a joke. Sweet. Did you guys use all four ingredients? Yes, we did. All right. Give it a taste. Go for it. Looks like a Luke, soup. That, sorry, Luke, that's borderline not GFA. We'll, we'll figure it out later. Oh, it's so good. Mmm! <laughs> oh. So? I'm good. That's Not good. real good. Okay. That's good to hear. Good. good. Nice. Very nice. Very cool. All right. Thank you guys so much. We're going to remove the spotlight and mute you. And next up, we're going to go to Bree and Riley. Let us know what you cooked and how you're feeling. Um, yeah, we're feeling really good. We feel a lot better about our presentation this round. Um, we made a, this, an animal cracker crusted cod um, with coconut milk as our binding agent. Um, what? Sledge. Sledge, whatever that means. And then um, we made a uh, seared tomatillo, tomato, and mango salsa. Um, to go with, and we use some lime juice in there. Um, some lime on the side. Yeah. To, to top it off with, right? Yeah, yeah. we also yeah. put lime juice in the salsa while we were oh, cooking it. Nice. That's awesome. Can we get one more look at it? Yes. Thank you. And uh, when you were searing, you're using your searing technique. How did you know when it was time to uh, remove? The uh, salsa or the fish? Which part did you sear? You said you had a seared. Well, okay, so the the tomatillos and the mangoes were more like sauteed. Oh, the cod was seared. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. I just wanted to ask like a random technical question. She's pretending Great that job. she knows. I'm pretending like I'm a I'm a, okay. We are moving on. Thank you for sharing. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's go over to Nathan. Nathan, tell us what you made for this. Oh, they didn't taste it. Oh, wait, 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 time oh out. Oh my gosh. Oh, no, no, go back, Bree and Riley. Bree and Riley, please taste tell, the dish. Tell us what it tastes like. Sorry. <sighs> You're muted, but that's okay. We don't have to hear you chewing. I want to hear you say, mm. <laughs> delicious. Uh, uh. Okay, um, I probably won't react as loudly as Hunter. I'm um, sorry to disappoint. The reaction is not part of your criteria. It's not. Mm. Nice. She likes it. That's all that matters. One Very good. Sweet. Beautiful. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Sorry, Nathan. Back to you. What did you make for us this evening? All right. I made chicken katsu over rice with some uh, bok choy, mango, tomatillo, sauteed veggies, and then a coconut milk uh, curry sauce. That's a long name. Wait, can you repeat that one more time? Chicken katsu with bok, uh, bok choy mango tomatillo and uh, coconut milk uh, sauce. Very cool. So you poured the sauce over the chicken. Gotta let it soak in, you know? Did you pour the sauce over the bok choy or was that? Yeah. So the bok choy, the bok choy mango tomatillo was all uh, reduced in the sauteed and then the coconut milk was reduced in the pan. Add a little curry, black pepper, red pepper flakes to cut through the uh, richness of the dairy so it's a little spicy and then serve over top of rice. And the animal cracker, uh, it's an animal cracker crust on the chicken. Okay, when, go ahead and taste your dish and I have a question for you after you taste. All right. Yeah, that's really good. Hey, good sound effects. When you, when you taste that rice, I want you to be honest with me, is it dry? Not at all. Really nice and juicy. Juicy rice. <laughs> no, 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 not the rice. I thought you were talking about the chicken. The <laughs> rice is not dry at all. It's great. All right. Sweet. Can we see the inside of the chicken? Yes. See if it's we, need oh, to, yeah. we need to know. Here we go. Let's see if I can get that in there for you. Perfectly cooked. Oh, yeah. Perfectly cooked. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dorothy and Kayla, let's hear it. What'd you make? Oh, you guys are cute in your kitchen. Okay, so we made coconut shrimp tacos. So the shrimps are breaded in um, animal crackers and we used an egg wash with coconut milk to get the breading to stick. 
and then we added a coconut milk coleslaw and that also has cilantro and black pepper in it and then we added a mango and roasted tomatillo chutney with a chili powder and cilantro on top of that and then to complement it we made a non-alcoholic margarita <laughs> mocktail with a salted rim and sparkling water and the coconut is also coconut shrimp so we added shredded coconut to the breading as well with the animal crackers to help tie in the coconut milk I was gonna ask, if, can you really taste the coconut if it's only in the egg wash, but you added coconut flakes? Mm -hmm. And it's in the coleslaw as well. Yeah. Okay, very good. Go ahead and give it a try. Okay. I don't know. Do <laughs> Go for it. Come back. I heard a crunch. That's good. That's a good sign. We like crunches. The animal crackers made the breading on the shrimp like super crispy with the coconut. Yeah. Super good. So interesting. Cause I feel like the animal crackers could easily make it mochi cause they're so like crackery. Now I have a question. Um, I forget if you told me this, did you do something with the tortillas or are they just straight from the bag? Um, we toasted them in the pan, um, in the pan that we uh, roasted the tomatillos in to help give some extra roasty flavor there. And a little char on the outside. Uh huh. Uh, Maya from the audience has a question for you. What defines chutney? How would you define a chutney? It's a chunky, like we didn't blend it like you would probably for a salsa. We got a definition from Tina. Oh, someone wow. in the audience gave us a definition. Wow. Yeah, so Amazing. We'll save, time. we'll save time by letting everybody read that. Thank you so much, Dorothy and Kayla. We're going to take the spotlight off. Go ahead and mute yourselves. We're gonna go back to gallery view. All right, audience, it's time for us to converse about this past round. It's gonna be a really tough call. I don't know how we're gonna do this, but. This is gonna be tough. We're gonna take 60 seconds to discuss this past round. So chefs, go ahead and clear your stations and get ready for the final round while we talk about who is <clears throat> chopped next. Okay, thank you, one second.
have arrived with the chopping block. So the people we've decided to chop in this round. It was such or a the person, hard decision. The people or person we've decided to this chop. This was so hard, you guys. It was so hard. The only way that we could figure out who we were chopping was by looking at the scores from this round and last round. Mm -hmm. So the person we decided, the group, the contestant, <laughs> I don't know how to say this. Okay. The team. The contestant <laughs> and or contestants we decided to chop based off of their scores from last round and this round combined, are Beth and Leanne. Unfortunately, you have been chopped in round two. But we are so sorry. But keep your heads up because you can still redeem yourselves if you get a very wonderful score on this next round, okay? So don't give up yet. Everybody else, you're mostly safe. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started for the third round. Let me just, sorry, let me just reiterate something. We want, we had to chop you because of the scores from last round and this one combined. Um, we thought that your guys' presentation was great, but the creativity was a little bit, you know, it sounded great with all the little, the pieces of it with like the cilantro and the lime and the salsa, but it's all just kind of very expected. Um, but overall, we thought it was wonderful. And I wish I could try it because you guys were so excited about it. But yes, sometime, Alice. <laughs> yes, we're excited to see what you guys come up with for the next round. All right, chefs, let's move into round three, which is the dessert round. My favorite round, I'll say, I probably will be drooling by the end of this. You have 15 minutes to make the most exquisite dessert you can think of using these ingredients. Chefs, please open your baskets. I love saying that. I feel like <laughs> I'm on chopped, okay. You and are. the first, I am on chop. The first ingredient is a plantain. What's a plantain? That looks like a banana. Well, it's not a banana. It's a plantain. I don't know. Let me Google that. And the next mystery basket ingredient is Coca-Cola. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. Will it be served as a drink or will it be transformed? Our third ingredient is pancake mix. Remember, creativity is one of the biggest categories in this challenge. We also have the gluten-free with Beth and Leanne. They are cooking with gluten-free pancake mix. So this is the third ingredient. And our fourth and final basket ingredient is corn chips. <laughs> Woo! Okay, what an exciting basket to cook with. Contestants, I hope you're ready because your time starts right now. 15 minutes on the clock. Here we go. All right, let me ask you something. Leanne. All right, I'm ready. When you get one of those like variety packs of chips, are Fritos usually the one that you would pick last? I was just about to say Fritos would be my last pick. They would be my last pick too. I feel like they're always the last pick. I feel like when you go for a variety pack of chips, you never go for the Fritos. No. But see, people do go for the plain potato chips because Fritos are basically just plain corn chips. Hmm. You know I what mean, I mean? Luke says Lay's. Lay's like the original flavor or like the sour cream and onion or the barbecue. I think he's saying the plain ones. Yeah, the original ones. Are you saying that those would be the last ones to be picked? Because personally, I All agree. Right. Audience, what is the last flavor you'd pick in a variety pack of chips? If you say Cheetos, you're being removed from this call. Just kidding. I'm joking. I love That's Cheetos. A joke. Okay, let me tell you guys something about plantains. So I was wondering, what's a plantain and why is it called different than a banana? Anyway, I learned that it's a member of the banana family, but unlike a banana, plantains are starchy and need to be cooked before eating. Oh. As a plantain ripens, its starches are converted to natural sugars, resulting in a sweeter taste. Interesting. So the greener the plantain, the less sweet it is. Wow, that's so interesting. Let's go around and see how our contestants are handling this final round of Virtually Chopped. I sure hope everyone ends up cooking their plantain because Let's check on, sorry. they're inedible when raw. Yeah, don't eat it now. Let's check on Dorothy and Kayla. Dorothy and Kayla, how's it going? Woo, it's going swell. Um, we decided to do some caramelized plantains and make a caramel reduction from the Coca-Cola. And we're gonna make a layered cake um, out of the pancake mix. And in, in between the layers, we're gonna have the caramelized plantains. And yeah, that's what we're thinking so far. You're telling me you can make cake in less than 15 minutes? 
We're gonna try our hardest. <laughs> oh wow! Best of luck to you, Dorothy yeah. and Kayla. We'll leave you guys yeah. to it. Well, yeah, keep oh, on cooking. Brown sugar. Yes. All right, Hunter and Colin, over to you. What are you making in this dessert round? So what we're doing is fried plantains, and what we're going to do is we're crushing up the fritos right now, sanding them into plantains, and then we're going to fry them up, and then we're going to make a caramelized reduction right here with the Coca-Cola and some brown sugar, and then we're going to be making crepes along with that. Great. That sounds pretty good. I'm interested to see how that turns out. Thank you for sharing. We'll be back soon. Keep cooking. And the quick time check. We have 12 minutes on the clock. Oh, that was a good time check. Bree and Riley, we're headed over to you. Sorry to interrupt, but we would like to know what you plan to do in this dessert round. Hello, Riley. Hi. We can hear you. Okay. Um, so we are making a and the base is going to be um, Fritos uh, with some brown sugar and coconut oil. And then we're going to have vegan um, whipped cream and some fruit and then some um, pancake coated uh, plantains. Are you making your whipped cream from scratch? No, we bought some. Ah, oh, okay. Very good. Very good. That sounds delicious. What kind of fruit are you using this evening? We're using um, blackberries and strawberries. Ah, oh, the berries. Love those berries. All right. Keep on cooking. We'll be back in a bit. Thank you. Let's go over to Nathan Reichlin. Nathan Reichlin, you are the only one cooking alone this evening. How does that feel? Let's say that again. How does it feel to cook alone? Uh, I'm good. I've got some people cheering me on. They're not cooking, but they're cheering me on. Just do having you, a good time. Do you prefer to be in the kitchen alone? I always like, I like cooking for people. So I don't mind cooking it alone. I love it. I enjoy cooking. And so I don't mind doing it alone in the slightest. If anyone wants to help, if they're over, I usually don't mind. Interesting. All right. Tell us what you're making this evening. All right. I'm making uh, plantain fritters with corn, uh, with the corn chips and the biscuit as the batter, and then I'm gonna top it with coke syrup, and so with the mascarpone. Ooh, mascarpone. I've heard that word a lot on cooking shows, but Nathan, can you clarify, what is a mascarpone? Mascarpone is basically like Italian whipped cream. It's like a mix between whipped cream and, it's a, similar to cream cheese, but it's a little tinier, and you can whip it. Whip it. If you've had tiramisu, you've had mascarpone. Uh, okay, very cool. Thank you. Thank We're you gonna leave you to it. You have 40 seconds left on the clock. Amazing. Very cool. Wow, what a tough basket of ingredients. They always say that on <laughs> What not, a tough basket. I feel like it's not that tough this round, actually. Really? I feel like they're, they can be cohesive. Yeah. We should have thrown in something crazy. Like jalapeno. Audience, what should we have thrown into this basket to make it crazier? And what would you cook? Let's type in what we have in this basket. What are the ingredients? Um, Corn coconut chips. Cola. Sorry if you can hear my very loud crunch, crunch, crunch. <laughs> Typing. What is that last one? Uh, plantain. Oh, sorry. Coca Cola. Got it. Pancake mix. Pancake. All right. Cool beans. Awesome. Hmm. I heard a lot of people are going to be frying their plantains, mm -hmm. which is curious to me. Because uh, I didn't think people would choose to do the same thing. You know what I mean? Ooh, are you bashing on everyone saying that they're not creative? No, I'm not. I'm just wondering if their dishes are going to turn out looking the same. Interesting. Um, I actually have one more um, response to read from Chef Nathan to the question, if you could be a kitchen appliance, which would you be and why? Nathan replied, a cast iron skillet, since it's so useful, durable, and makes all sorts of food better. That's pretty A cast cool. iron skillet. One time I left a cast iron skillet on my counter and it left this like yellow ring and never, never came off. That's crazy. All right, Bummer. we have seven minutes and 50 seconds on the clock. And now I'm gonna read 
why we should pick everyone according to their applications. So Chef Beth responded, I recently got into cooking and has completely rerouted the way I view food in general. When I got home on a random day this summer, one of my roommate's significant others was making curry, a dish I hadn't had at the time. We saw a lot of curry tonight. After tasting it and falling in love, I realized how much I admired the way that cooking can bring people together. Rather than a must do at the end of a long day, cooking is the way that I'm able to release and recenter myself while also remaining connected to those around me. Being a part of this competition would be solidifying in my cooking endeavors in a way to prove to myself that this newfound hobby is worthwhile. Amazing. You want to read Chef Brianna and Riley's? Chef Brianna said, you should choose us because we are up for the challenge. We specialize in gluten-free, dairy-free, and pescatarian cuisine. So we represent a wide variety of dietary restrictions. Hmm. I saw that with their cod tacos. Yeah. This creates a variety and inspires creativity in our cooking. We would like to be on CHOP to encourage other people to get out of the norms and attempt making meals to fit a wide variety of people even if it is difficult. I'm sure tonight it is it is truly difficult with the extra challenge of using these basket ingredients and the time crunch. That's very cool. Let's do a quick time check before we go on. Six minutes and 30 seconds. All right, Chef Hunter responded saying, I want to participate in this competition because it's a great opportunity for me to try something new and get creative with my cooking. I also feel like I have enough experience in the kitchen to do well in this competition. Cooking is relaxing for me. It would be nice to have a little competition to spice things up. Wow. And last but not least, Chef Nathan said, I'll make food that will knock your socks off, though. How will you taste it? Uh, I wish I could. Some cooking highlights from the past two weeks include chicken cordon bleu, shrimp, shrimp tempura, pork chops with an Asian pear chutney, and some pan fried salmon with Yukon gold potatoes a ginger carrot puree, and le my friends would kill me if I didn't answer. Enter. Enter. <laughs> and I actually forgot to read one more of the, forgot to read Dorothy, so I'm going to pull that up really quick. We have five and a half minutes left. While Alice is finding Dorothy's application answer, let's check on our chefs and see how things are going. Quick camera check. Nathan's on the stove. Looks like he's got a little spill. Don't worry. It happens. It happens in the kitchen. It happens all the time. At least it's not a fire. All right. Looks like things are coming along nicely. Let's look okay. at uh, Beth and Leanne. <clears throat> ah, very focused, precise movements in the kitchen, I see. Make sure you guys are getting your stuff cooked because you have five, four minutes and 55 seconds on the clock. Just about five minutes. All right. Let's take a look at Hunter and Colin. Oh, I see a lot of pans, lots of pans. Very cool. See, another hard part about this challenge is you don't have time to wash your dishes. Mm -hmm. So if you only have one pan, I'm sure it'd be really hard to do this. Comp oh, Ooh, is he we're about to see it? a flip, he everyone. Gonna... He did it. Not bad at all. Way to go. That was amazing. Very I'm, cool. I'm glad we caught that moment. All right, keep cooking. Let's go over to Bree and Riley. <laughs> Brie is so concentrated over there on the stove. It looks like there would be just soft music playing in the background as she concentrates on what she's doing. I don't want to distract her. Let's go. Dorothy and Kayla, hard at work. Oh, going into the oven. This is the first oven. I don't think anybody else has used the oven this far. Am I? Do you think that they preheated the oven up to? before oh, this oh i don't know to prepare i don't know but it looks like they must have a fast eating oven if mm. fast eating <laughs> fast eating oven. call me a fast eating oven too, I fast. oh i wonder what they toasted i'm so excited to see how this cake turns out me too they're working swiftly All and right. efficiently and you guys have three minutes and 20 seconds on the clock Let's three hear... minutes and 20 seconds sorry 15 seconds <laughs> <laughs> Let me read what their response was to explain your reasons for participating in this virtual cooking competition. We were in the Heaven's Kitchen cooking competition two years ago, and we would like to defend our winning title. Besides that, we love to cook together, especially in our tiny, tiny apartment kitchen. Mm -hmm. Both of us use cooking as a way to avoid studying, so we cook a lot. One of our specialties has become repurposing leftover food from the bone, especially the chicken strips. 
That sounds pretty smart to me. That is brilliant. I'm telling you, she's got a, they've got big brains under those big hats. Funnel cake instead of a fritter. That's a really good. Name. Funnel cake, yum. All right, we've got two minutes and 35 seconds on the clock. Oh, two and a half minutes, chefs. I don't have anything else to say. I thought I was going to say something really dumb. Honestly, I think, I think the idea of making a fritter, or not fritter, um, a funnel cake is wonderful. Sweet corn fritter with plantain, Coca-Cola, oh, Foster, bananas Foster. Ooh. Their favorite color is probably green. A little confused. Probably from something earlier that we said or read. Fritos, of course. See, most people would choose Fritos. Funyuns? Nobody ever talks about Funyuns anymore. Do you like Funyuns? No, I don't even like onion rings. I don't, I've never had Funyuns, I think. What about corn nuts? Have you ever had corn nuts? I love corn nuts. I feel like those are a great way to break your tooth off. One minute and 45 seconds left on the clock. Hmm. Make sure you guys are thinking about kinda, plating if you haven't started plating I want to add some pressure to these contestants. Hunter and Colin, I have a question for you. What has been the most challenging part of this evening? Staying calm. Yeah, staying clean. As you can see, he was on the floor. He made quite a mess. Oh. Um, one shift. Well, because the bag exploded all over the place. Oh, well, we did the same thing. <laughs> That's so it funny. happens. It happens. It happens. Okay, thanks for sharing. Right. One minute and seven seconds on the clock. Make sure you guys are plating. You should be plating by now if you want to make it on time. Um, Nathan, what's been the most challenging part of this evening for you? He's making a whipped mascarpone oh. with only 52 seconds on the clock. Is he going to make it in time? I don't think he's going to answer my Will question. Will he get those because stiff, peaks? <laughs> stiff peaks? Is he going to get the stiff peaks? Do I see stiff peaks? I see some pretty stiff peaks. Do I see stiff peaks? Very cool. Uh. <laughs> nice. What is that, a Dairy Queen blizzard? All right, let's keep moving on. <laughs> 30 seconds on the clock. Let's take a look at Beth and Leanne. Final 30 seconds. Looks like they're moving a lot the in the kitchen. The stress is real. Make sure you guys are plating. You've got 20 seconds Get on the clock. Get your dishes on the plate. This is so exciting. <laughs> 15 seconds. Last 15 seconds. Give it all you've got. All right, everybody. We're going to count down from seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands, Hands off. up. You're done. All right. Ah, uh, oh, they're picking up their plate. All right. All right. Nice job, everybody. Give yourselves a round of applause. You just finished virtually chopped. Bree and Riley, make sure you guys are closer to the camera so we can see you. All right, sweet. All right, how's everybody feeling? This is the last round. Last round before we know the chopped champion. But honestly, you guys, Right now, I want to crown all of you because I am so impressed. I did not think this was going to go this way. I thought it would be more like worst cooks in America, but this is more like best cooks in the world. Oh, true love. All right. Okay, let's see what, what our dessert options are tonight. Let's start with... Who should we start with? Let's start with Hunter and Colin. Let's start with Hunter and Colin. Hunter and Colin, please tell us what you've made for dessert. All right, so here, as you can see, we have a plantain rake. So what we did here was fry these plantains um, with those corn chips. And then we made a crepe out of the pancake mix. And as you can tell by all this nice caramelized vanilla coca-cola cinnamon caramel reduction on top sprinkled with just a little bit of sugar to bring even more sweetness to the dish sweet do you want to try it and let us know how it tastes and give us a peek of the uh, inside i want to see the inside it might be a little bit too hot to try right now should we come back to you yeah, you know, come back come back all right we'll do that did they use all of the did you guys use all of your four ingredients yeah. Right, did you guys use all four ingredients? Uh, yes, yes, we did. Awesome, yeah. sounds good. All right, thank let's, you. Let's we'll move. be back. Yes, yeah, so we'll move. We'll, we're gonna move on. 
Um, let's go to Dorothy and Kayla. Can we tell us what you guys made? Okay, so we made a, a spiced layer cake um, that is a naked cake on the outside. And um, the filling is caramelized plantains with a Coca-Cola reduction. Um, and the we also made a corn chip crumble. That was what was in the oven. So we made a um, brown, we added brown sugar and butter to the corn chip crumble and added coconut flakes mm -hmm. and roasted it in the oven. And that's in the middle as well. The cake has coconut milk. The cake also used coconut milk from a previous round. Okay. Um, and we have rosemary sprigs to add a little bit of color to the brown and white. Yeah. We also have a homemade whipped cream that we made. Very cool. Awesome. awesome. Are you guys okay to try it right now? Yes, we are. There's also chocolate little spiral things on it. Chocolate, chocolate curls. curls. Chocolate, chocolate curls. curls. We so, guys tilt the camera. camera. Down a chocolate little. camera. There we go. Oh. The crumble is actually a nice textural thing because it's like it has, adds it keeps it from being mushy. Mm -hmm. And the bananas have like caramelized a little bit, so they're kind of crunchy and sweet. It's really good. Very cool. How's the texture of your cake? Is it spongy or is it dense? It's pretty spongy actually. Okay, wow. And one we didn't make them too thick, so they're pretty light. One more question. How are the plantains? Do they, you feel like they're fully cooked? Yes. I think the Coca-Cola made added some sweetness because they're kind of bitter without any sugar on them. And we also added brown sugar and butter, so they they got a nice caramel on them. sweet. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Very nice. You should be very proud of your dish. Thank you very much. We're moving to the next next dish. Let's go over to Nathan. Nathan, let's see it. What did you make? Uh, all right, so tonight I made plantain fritters using the pancake plantains, bisquick, and corn chips. Uh, corn chips crushed up into the into the fritter fritter dip. I deep fried them with a whipped uh, mascarpone and then a Coca Cola uh, syrup. Mm. Can you can you sorry? Can you repeat it one more time? Banana fritters. Okay. With Coca Cola syrup and whipped mascarpone. Yum. Sweet. Um, can you take a bite and let us know? Are they too hot? Yeah. Oh, ho, ho. Plantains are perfectly cooked. They're tender. How do you know? You haven't taken a bite? I can feel them. Sorry. sorry. The Coca-Cola almost tastes like, since it's reduced, it's almost, it's very caramely. And the, <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> it's good. Why don't, you have, why don't you have your cameraman take a taste? All right. Cameraman, have a taste. Be honest. With I, do, you. I do finger food. You've been working so hard today. You, you deserve a treat. How's this? Very good. It was delicious. I eat this for breakfast. Dessert, anything. Very cool. Sweet. Thank you so much. We're going to move on. Yeah. Um, okay, we're going to see Lee and Riley. Cameras All right, we got to explain what you made. Um, so we made a parfait, and the base is the um, Fritos with brown sugar and coconut oil, and then we put some vegan whip with some berries, and then there is also the plantain, which we coated in pancake batter and cooked, and we used the coke in the pancake batter. Very cool. Oh, wow. Okay, I want to make sure you get all the way down to that corn crumble. Yeah, corn we'll see. Yeah, try to, I know it's going to be hard. Because it's gluten free and vegan. So. I really love your creativity with making a parfait. That's something I would have never thought of with this. I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, I'm going to try another bite to get the face. <laughs> All right, how is it? It's really good. <laughs> Tell me, what, what's the consistency of vegan whipped cream? Is it the same? Well, um, well, this came out of the, the freezer. Oh. And so then it was kind of like thawed out. So it's, it's a little more liquidy. Okay. It's not as thick, but still Very tastes good. Nice. So how's the corn crumble? Is it too salty or is it 
evened out with the balance of the um no it has the right it has the right touch of saltiness it's kind of like a sweet savory dessert which i like so amazing sweet. awesome we also had an accident in the kitchen which is what i've been cleaning up our coca-cola exploded when we opened it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> took us a little off guard but we oh. recovered wow well working through the trials that's awesome <laughs> came out alive okay sweet all right let's move on to beth and leanne for our final contestants of the final round what did you guys make tonight <laughs> we decided to make you guys a sweet summery sun out of our plantains when we saw the ingredient plantains we immediately thought of something light and summery like this and so it was only fitting that our presentation would reflect that um we have on top of it made a ganache with Coca-Cola reduced and incorporated some of the coconut milk from last round as well. Can you explain, like, just like name the dish really quick? Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Can you give the dish like a name? Like, what did you make? Sorry. Oh, <laughs> summer. We would name it basically summer, but we said, what did you say? Like a sunshine spiral. Spiral. So like out of plantains. Out of plantains. Okay. Can you describe the dish one more time? I was mesmerized by the sun thing happening. Yeah, 100%. So we have the plantains as our base that are fried in the pancake mix and Fritos that exploded all over our floor. <laughs> A ganache that is reduced Coca-Cola with semi-sweet chocolate and some coconut milk used from the last round with whipped cream to make it all cohesive. Okay, give it a taste. It looks really good. I don't know why I got a fork. Yeah. I'm not, not going to use a fork for this. Finger food for sure. Oh, wait. <laughs> I was not expecting this to be mm. good. This is really good. Wow. What does it taste like? Describe the flavors. So the whipped cream makes it creamy, but the crust with the pancake mix and the Fritos mm -hmm. counters that, and the ganache has like a fun Coca-Cola pop to it that tastes like summer. I would, I would eat this. I like the crunchiness. I'm really surprised with how the plantains turned out. You're right about the starchiness. Mm -hmm. I think that um, I'd be interested to know the different ways of cooking it. Mm -hmm. We fried it in a pan. It's nice and tender and yeah. crisp, and I like it. But I don't see the sweetness coming out in the plantain like you were describing, Alice. Mm -hmm. So would you ever buy a plantain in the store? now i would yeah if i wanted to like try something out honestly that cake yeah what the heck that's the recipe <laughs> um can you guys pick up the plate really quick so we can take a quick photo of well um we just it looks really it. bad alice <laughs> <laughs> well, our presentation was so good we're gonna take a screenshot okay one of the plate we want it with you guys in it oh well we can't do both wait that's the point <laughs> Played out like this. All right, three, two, one. Cool beans. All right, thank you. Do you guys? Did you guys use all four ingredients? Yes. Sweet. All right, we're gonna move on to Hunter and Colin to try their dish. All right. Taste. All right. Get the inside. Get the inside. Oh, it's so good. Something, Leah. Wow. I see some. Did you put cinnamon sugar on it? Or has it just been like cooling off? Mmm. Mm. Oh, mm. The extraction from the cinnamon and vanilla just adds like this punch to it. And then combined with the plantain, like it's a little bit of sweetness, so like it turned into like this creamy ganache, and it is so good. It's the perfect balance between sweetness, savory, and it's to die for. It's so good. It's oh. I was looking at the word phenomenal tonight, and I didn't hear the word phenomenal. <laughs> but you know, maybe I would have used it if I could have tried. All right, you know what time it is. It's the hardest time of the evening. It is time to determine the champion of this competition, which means four chefs will be chopped. So Alice and I need about two minutes to talk, and we're going to um, 
We're actually going to move the contestants yeah. into a breakout room. So let me create the breakout room really quick. Oh, yeah, we're good. Uh, turn call in and then that's five, right? Yeah. Okay, so when you see the breakout room, um, go ahead and, nope, just open all rooms. Go ahead and go and the crowd and Alice and I are going to chat, do some reviewing of all three dishes and all three categories. We have our score sheet here ready to look at and uh, we'll see you back in about two or three minutes, okay? Go ahead and go to your breakout rooms, room. All right. Uh, it looks like Bree and Riley just joined. Okay, right, now audience. Now that they're gone. Let's chat. Let's okay. crack open those plantain. <laughs> <laughs> Please give us about one minute to go over our scores. And after we uh, look at the total scores, we will open it up to you to say in the chat who you think deserves to be chopped champion. Okay, so go ahead and start typing who you think. But while you're doing that, we're going to talk muted. And we're not going to look at your guys' answers till we're done talking. That's true. Goodbye, right. chat. Okay, see you in a little bit. Okay. All right, everybody. So we're looking at these. Let's see. Let's scroll to the top of this. Um, oh, wow. I'm glad you right, all are we chatting away. So we've got one vote for Dorothy and Kayla. Two. Dorothy and Kayla. Did you see that cake, though? Yes, I did. Oh, Nathan, wow. Dorothy and Kayla. Brianna and Riley made good food. Would have been better if it was French toast, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well... Dorothy and Kayla were the most creative. I think they also had the most consistently amazing plating. Interesting. Hunter and Colin rocked some mad skills tonight. Dopes and Kayla. Okay. Dorothy and Kayla and Nathaniel is a close second. Chefs Beth and Leanne were by far the most open-minded of the CHOP contestants. They thought outside the box. Interesting. Nathan or Hunter and Colin. Shout out to the group who cooked for those allergies. One moment. Sorry, Beth and Leanne for the win, Brian and Riley. Leanne and Beth, Hunter. So it looks like all of you want everyone to win. So I guess we'll just call everyone a winner. Sound good? Hmm. 
No. No, that's not what they do. Okay. We are going to... We're going to need like a little bit more time. I'm going to invite them back and it usually gives them 60 seconds to come back. So we're going to wait 60 seconds and then we will have the winner ready to go on the chopping block. Actually, we'll have the non-winners on the chopping block. Right. Which will let you know who the winner is. All right. Thanks for your participation. Hold on one second. They have 60 seconds to come back. Okay. Do you want to mute yourselves for a little bit? <laughs> yep, we're going to go on mute. Hi, we're just chatting for about 10 more seconds. This is a really tough call. Hang in there. All right, everyone, we think we have finally made a decision. Um, it's been really hard. Being a judge is not as fun as it looks because uh, obviously you have to make people sad. But before we announce who is on the chopping block, we would like to talk about what we appreciate about each one of you in the kitchen. So we've taken some notes about the things you've done really well and we'd like to share those with you so you don't leave here feeling like a sad kitchen chef. Okay. And also we just really appreciate you guys coming out and applying to be in this. This was so much fun for us. And we hope you guys had fun too, even though there were some kitchen mess ups like Fritos on the floor and Coca-Cola and so Yeah. Cool beans. It's been so fun. This is our first cooking competition and it's- No, it's not. Heaven's Kitchen. First virtual cooking competition, huh? Okay. All right. We're going to start off with Hunter and Colin. So we thought that you guys made some really creative dishes. Each round was like pretty surprising for us as judges. We were like, what? They're going to make that? I yeah. think that was fun. And I appreciated the dessert round in particular. I think that crepe idea was really cool. And like when you showed us the inside, it was like a whole new experience because the top of it was like, yeah, that's cool. But then you opened it and we were like, that's cool. Yeah. It looks okay. great. Cool. Um, Nathan, your main course was incredibly creative, the way that you made something that nobody else made and you incorporated different um, a different culture into your cooking. It was awesome. And your plates have looked very, very amazing. Your presentation has been on point tonight. So that is our, that is our compliment to you, chef. Um, next up, we had Beth and Leanne. We love the variety of dishes you created and the fact that you're able to cook with gluten-free ingredients. I think that's super fun and I'm glad that you guys are able to be inclusive with your dishes. That's wonderful. Um, I also love the fun, energetic spirit you guys carry in the kitchen. I think that really adds to the experience and it's definitely something that we enjoyed watching. Yeah, you guys are great on camera. It's awesome. Should be on camera more often. Dorothy and Kayla, 
Um, you really thought outside the box with the ingredients. You're creative using ingredients from past rounds and your next dishes and just consistently worked with ease and comfort in the kitchen, which we noticed. Um, so congratulations on your obvious experience in the kitchen. <laughs> awesome. And then last but not least, we have Bree and Riley. You guys really stepped up your game after the first round when we had to chop you. But to be fair, they were also last minute a, a contestants because someone mm -hmm. backed out. And so we just wanted to acknowledge that you guys did a wonderful job with the little time that you had and your disadvantage of not having as much time as maybe the other chefs did with yeah. knowing that they were gonna be on the show. So we really appreciate you guys coming out and working with dietary restriction based meals, which I think is wonderful and you guys are so valuable and we we're so glad you were able you were able to join us yes they literally found out like three hours before the event started that they would be competing and the rest of the competitors they found out on wednesday so that's insane yeah very awesome job brie and riley thank you for being here okay let's get down to it let's get down to it all I right sit all <laughs> so we have four names under or i guess on the chopping block Malia is going to lift it up. Hmm. She's going to lift up the pot thing and we will announce who is the chopped champion. Wait, wait, should we announce who got chopped or who got? No, let's do chopped champion. Or should we just not say anything? So We're not gonna say them. anything. You're gonna have to read all of them. Three, two, one. Yeah. The chopped champions are Dorothy and Kayla. Congratulations, Congratulations, Dorothy and Kayla. You are the CHOP champions of Virtually Chopped. Please give a round of applause. Congratulations. Congratulations to everyone else who entered also. You guys made incredible dishes. Seriously, big kudos. And we want to explain why we chose Dorothy and Kayla as the winners. The reason for this is that they had high scores in every round. Their dishes were really creative. Um, I think the dessert round in particular just tied it all up for us and we were like really impressed that you guys were able to make a cake in so little time. Yes. And you also brought in a lot of outside ingredients, which I thought was really interesting and let us know when you want us to reimburse you for those. Um, and you guys moved yeah. really swiftly in the kitchen, which shows that you guys have experience as cooks. Yes, so. a wonderful job. You are now the proud owners of an air fryer. So we have your prize for you here in Hadlock. Please don't come pick it up tonight because we won't be here, but we will be emailing you shortly to get you your prize. Okay, everyone, that's a wrap to our Virtually Chop. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you, audience members, for being here. Remember, Fall Fest is next weekend, so please come over to Fall Fest. That's our next event. 7 p.m. till 10 p.m. all over campus. Halloween. Find information on our Instagram page. And we'll be doing some highlights of tonight's show, so stay tuned to see some highlights. We have Thank recorded. you so much. Yes. Awesome job, everyone. I'm going to end the call now. Goodbye. Good night. Thank you for coming. Yes,